I read stories of revival and I told myself, Lord, help me. This Christianity we are doing, have we begun? Have we begun? People that were so submitted to God, they were willing to let go of everything. I read the story of how the Bible was transited from one generation to generation. There were many families. When they know you have a copy of the Bible, they tie you to the stake and they burn your family in your presence. You watch your family burn for you to bring the Bible. This man will say no. Just because they wanted the Bible. Because the goal was to burn every remaining word of God. So that a generation will not have the word of God. Men were willing to give up their families for the word of God to be transferred. And today we have the Bible. We throw a copy on the bed. Throw one on the wheel. We don't know the spirit of revival. It's a spirit of absolute submission to God. I read the story of perpetual and felicity. A woman and a slave, pregnant, they gave her an option to deny God or they will kill her. She says she will not. They kept her in prison until she was delivered of her baby and they brought her to the arena. A woman who just gave birth, injured all over, but there was conviction too strong that could not be changed. They brought her to the arena and she was torn apart by white beasts. Those were the things that fueled the conviction of the church. The church of the first order were not powered by testimonies of God bless you. They were powered by the deaths of the martyrs that refused to deny the faith. So even in the face of death, they stood their ground. That's why when you study church history, you will never find birthdays. It's only death days they found. Because your death was more important than your birth. They want to know how did you depart from this world? What was the depth of your conviction? What were you able to withstand for God? I read the story of Polycarp, the Bishop of Smyrna, who was the disciple of John the Beloved. He was 86 years old when they came to abduct him and they told him he could escape. He said no. He wanted to leave a testimony for the church. Even though he had opportunity to escape, he stood there and when his captors came, he gave them food to eat and when they finished, he followed them out. And they told him to deny Jesus. He said, for 86 years, my master has been good to me. How can I deny him at this hour? And they wanted to tie him, to burn him. He said, no, don't bother. I've spoken with the Lord already. I have the stamina to stand. And he was born to, he was born to death. And while he was dying, he was singing hymns. And when the church heard it, there was a revival. The second message of revival is the message of martyrdom. That a generation will be baptized with the spirit of death. And even in the face of death, they will not bow. They will stand their ground and their conviction will become a testimony in the spirit. We have a church today that comes to God only for what God offers. We don't know the church that is willing to give up herself anymore. He said, time will fail me to speak of Gideon, to speak of Barak, to speak of Samuel and the prophet who through faith subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They obtained promises. He said, weak men were made valiant in battle. He said, in the face of deliverance, they denied it that they may receive a better resurrection. He said, men were sown asunder. Women received their dead back to life. What was the power that regulated them? It was the spirit of martyrdom. Jesus came and said, some of you will be in prison for 10 days. He said, but if you do not deny my name, I will give you a crown of life. The power of revival is the power over death. That when the church is marching on, she doesn't bother what is by her way. None will break their rank. They can walk through fire. They can walk through death. Their testimony will remain the same. It is always Jesus. We will not be careful to answer you in this matter. You can make the fire seven times hotter. We will not bow. Oh king, we will not bow. You can make it seven times hotter. We will not bow. And even while they were being thrown to death, they were singing songs of praise. And suddenly, the king saw a fourth man in the fire. Is it not three men we threw into the fire? How come I see four men? And he said, the fourth man looks like the son of the highest. When we embrace martyrdom, then the outpouring can come. If our gospel is about what God can give alone, then we are not ready for revival because there's a place where your life will be demanded of you in matthew 24 from verse 9 they say you will be delivered of affliction 
you will be delivered up to be killed he said many will hate you he said there will be betrayers and there will be offenses because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he said him that endures to the end it's not he that i deliver he that endures to the end there is a place where our testimony become the texture of our endurance what can you stand for jesus what can you survive for jesus when we preach revival we preach the verdicts of death that a generation must rise that can endure fire for jesus a generation must rise that can endure death for jesus a generation must rise that can endure hatred for jesus for me to perish i will perish if that is what it takes revival comes on the shoulders of martyrs how many things can we give up how many things can we endure church is not only a place of excitement it's the ground where we learn how to die because the lord he kill it and he make it alive and the third message of revival is the message of prayer the message of prayer men that have power to stand on the altar power in the spirit is not the ability to open blind eyes power in the spirit is not the ability to raise the dead there are realms where men don't die there are realms where men are not blind the angelic realm they don't know sickness what do you call power if you enter into reality is the ability to stand on the altar he said the four beasts day and night forever and ever they cried holy 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 is the lord they had stamina on the altar the proof of eternal power is the power to stand on the altar a generation that we pray and not faint that's why i say men ought always to pray and not to faint when a generation begins to pray the outpouring is upon them the outpouring is upon them that's where we build powers in the spirit our power in the spirit is not a function of how many books we have read it's a function of how far we have traveled in the spirit there are men that knew the doors of the spirit by prayer he said i john i was in the aisle caught patmos and i heard the sound of a trumpet and as i turned he was in the spirit on the lord's day even when he was sentenced to death he kept the spirit i read the story of jeremiah they threw him to the belly of a soccer way to die there of suffocation but while he was in that pit he was crying and prophesying they knew how to carry the presence of god like a canopy when a generation can't pray they are not ready for revival the bible said concerning jesus as he prayed the sweat that fell from him was as thick as the clot of blood the man knew the powers of travail because zion will not bring forth unless she has traveled you want to see revival then the generation must pray you want to see revival then the generation must be ready to die for the ambassador you want to see revival then the generation must accept the verdict of repentance in the flesh there can no be revival no revival comes when men are still in themselves there is a place where we travel to in prayer we travel and we enter into authority spheres in the spirit oh i read the story of ananias the man prayed until he secured the borders of damascus paul was wrecking havoc on the church in jerusalem the moment paul entered damascus he was struck blind and when jesus appeared to him jesus could not help him jesus told him go into the city you will be told what to do there is a man that has secured the territorial integrity of damascus through prayer that's power in the heavenlies he was not a popular preacher but on the altar he was like a camel he's never tired the man secure damascus how can jesus in his glory appear to a man and send him to another man that's a warrior nothing can happen in damascus until ananias is consulted why was jesus going to destroy sodom and gomorrah and he came to abraham abraham is a man of the altar so long as lot live the jealousy of god must keep him 
because Abraham has preserved him on the altar. And God had to come tell Abraham, I'm going to discourage Sodom and Gomorrah. The power we step into in revival is born by prayer. By prayer, we are a generation that have departed from the pains and the rigors of prayer. Is there a performance? Is one of you a born servant of Christ? He's not a popular servant of Christ, he's a born servant. And the proof that he's a born servant is that he's laboring fervently for you in prayers. The language of revivalists is the language of intercession. We have power on the altar. When the power on the altar is not there, there can be no fire to lead a generation. He said the priest must put wood on the altar every morning. The fire on the altar must not be put out. That's the spirit of revival. The spirit of revival is the spirit of prayer. And we don't care if you are a governor. We don't care if you are a billionaire. Everyone must learn the way of prayer so that revival can come because there's a quorum that must be complete. They say 120 men sat in the upper room as they prayed as they prayed as they prayed they said the holy ghost fell upon them as cloven tongues of fire the bible said when they beat the disciples they returned to their own company they didn't come there to tell stories they came there to pray when you return to your company what do you do what do you do what we do in our company is to pray you want to pray in the holy ghost you want to pray in the holy ghost let's pray for one minute Pray in the Holy Ghost like a generation seeking revival. Barak Soda, Barianda Sonalakade.